From a man with severe amnesia to children who were abducted, here are the top eight most mysterious people who have finally been identified. Number 8. William Burgess Powell, a.k.a. Benjamin Kyle Back in 2004, someone working at a Burger King in Richmond Hill, Georgia, discovered that a naked man was lying beaten and unconscious in front of the restaurant's dumpsters. Not the best thing to find during your break. The man was sweating and sunburned, ants were crawling across his body, and he was covered with bruises. An ambulance took him to St. Joseph's Hospital after the employee contacted the police. The mysterious man possessed no ID or any documents that could identify him, so the police recorded his name at the hospital as Burger King Doe. When he woke up, he had no memory of his previous life and was diagnosed with severe amnesia. The only thing that he knew was that his name might be Benjamin and that he was born 10 years before Michael Jackson, as he stated on an Ask Me Anything thread on Reddit in 2012. Despite appearing online, on television, and being featured in a documentary, nobody contacted him with info about who he really was. He stated on Reddit that only three or four people contacted him, but they realized after a short discussion that he was not who they thought he'd be. He also stated that he had no long-term plans because he was already old. His mystery was finally solved in 2015 after years and years of genetic detective work. Even if most of his previous life is still unknown, he finally learned his real name, William Burgess Powell from Florida. He supposedly was reunited with his family but has decided to keep most details of his life private. Number 7. Samantha Azopardi, aka GPO Girl In October 2013, a girl was found wandering near Dublin General Post Office. She was found in a very distressed state by the Irish police forces. The very first news reports regarding GPO Girl stated that the Irish police had found a little girl aged between 14 and 16. She also possessed photos which displayed images of her being sexually abused and men handing cash to other men. All these factors led to the idea that she might have been the victim of an evil child sex trafficking network. This theory was soon destroyed when an Irishman named Joe Brennan identified the girl from a photo the police released. The truth was that the 14-year-old GPO girl was actually Australian Samantha as a party, aged 25. The Irish police later found that Samantha was well known for these kind of tricks in Australia and that she had already been convicted for fraud, deception, false pretenses, and for using forged documents in her home country. It was also stated that Azopardi had some mental issues, but she may have had some good traits deep down, like perseverance. Maybe it was this that led her to try the exact same scam in Canada only a year later. Both countries spent thousands of dollars investigating her claims. This time though, she was finally sentenced to 12 months with 6 months parole for 4 counts of dishonestly obtaining financial advantage by deception. Number 6. Andreas Grassel, aka The Piano Man In April 2005, a mysterious man wearing a soaking wet suit and tie was found wandering the streets of Sheerness, Kent in England. After he was found, he refused, or was unable, to answer any questions regarding who he was or where he came from. This led to even more confusion that lasted until someone had the bright idea of giving him a piece of paper and some pencils, hoping that he would write his name. The mysterious man did not write his name and instead he drew a detailed sketch of a grand piano. Intrigued, hospital staff brought him into a room with a piano where he began singing like a professional musician. Music was the only way he expressed himself for another couple of weeks. He played music from various genres including classical music, pop and even what appeared to be his own compositions. Doctors believed he was indeed a professional musician and that he had performed not long before he was found because of the way he was dressed. Some thought that the piano man, as he was nicknamed, suffered from trauma and had lost his memories, along with his ability to speak. Doctors examined him but found nothing wrong. The examinations weren't easy either because he was terrified of any new face. Sometime later, he finally broke his silence and identified himself as Andreas Grassel from Germany. He also told medical staff that he was gay and had traveled to England by train after losing his job. His plan was to commit suicide and he had refused to talk to the police because of his distressed state. And now for number 5, but first remember to subscribe before you leave. We have lots of new videos coming soon. Number 5. Robert Van Helsom, aka Forest Boy The Forest Boy was just 17 years old when he showed up at Berlin City Hall in September 2011. He looked like any other normal boy his age. Blonde, disheveled hair, blue eyes, about one and a half meters tall. 
He looked healthy and well cared for. It was only when he spoke that the civil servant he approached realized he wasn't really an ordinary kid. I'm all alone in the world, he told the office workers. I don't know who I am. Please help me. He told them that he had been traveling with his father for the last few years, and since his father's death, he had followed his instructions and searched for help in Berlin. One of the civil workers stated that he didn't look at all like a vagrant. He didn't smell, he was clean, his clothes were clean, but he simply didn't know anything about who he was. She was right, but the clean appearance of the forest boy wasn't because of some miracle. You may have already guessed it, he lied about all of it. Some school friends recognized him from the photos the police provided to the public and contacted Dutch police. When confronted with the new information, the boy admitted, okay, you got me, I am Robin and I made the whole story up. His full name was Robin van Helsum, aged 20 years from Hengelo, Netherlands. It was thought van Helsum vanished before he was found working in Berlin. He was later sentenced to 160 hours of community service. All of that just for attention. Number 4. Kimberly McLean A wife and mother committed suicide in Texas, and when the husband was going through her belongings, he found out that she wasn't who she said she was. A family in Pennsylvania had lost their daughter when she ran away at 18. An identity thief was left unidentified for six years after her death. A story about her was published in the newspapers, and it seems that she was known as Lori Erica Kennedy Ruff and Becky Sue Turner before that. It wasn't just a hobby of changing names now and then. Becky Sue Turner was the name of a young girl who had died in a Washington State fire in 1971. Identity theft, in case you didn't know, is quite the crime, and this case attracted the attention of Joe Velling, a Social Security Administration investigator who began asking questions about who Lori really was. The story was spread all over the world, and many online sleuths tried to help crack the case. With the help of Colleen Fitzpatrick, a nuclear physicist turned forensic genealogist, Belling was able to discover that the woman from Texas and the runaway from Pennsylvania were actually one and the same. Kimberly's mother, who was now 80 years old, said she last saw her daughter 30 years ago and was hoping that she was living a happy life. Of course, she was devastated by the news. The real life story of Lori Ruff remains a mystery. Number three. Angelica Castillo, aka Baby Hope. It is said that Hope dies last, but we will never know if that was the case for Baby Hope, whose body was found in a cooler at the Henry Hudson Parkway. The body was badly decomposed and examiners concluded that the body was that of a three to four year old Hispanic girl who was malnourished and whose hands had been bound. Unfortunately, even after the examination was completed, the case remained unsolved. Police paid for the victim's funeral in 1993. Her headstone was marked as Baby Hope, with a note at the bottom saying, Because We Care. Finally, after 20 years, the case was cracked with the help of an anonymous tip, who led to the identity of the victim and eventually the killer. Angelica Castillo, who was known for over 20 years as Baby Hope, finally had a name. The little girl had been murdered by her cousin, Conrado Juarez, an adult who confessed to torturing and sexually abusing the child before he suffocated her with a pillow. Number 2. David Litton A stranger walks into a bar, but it's not really a joke. It's what a landlord told the police when asked about an unknown man. A stranger came up to him in a bar in December 2015 and asked for directions to the top of the mountain. Not long after, his body was found by a cyclist. He was lying on his back with his feet facing uphill. Because of the distance he had walked and his advanced age, it was assumed that he had died of a heart attack, but that was not the case. It turns out the man died from a lethal dose of strychnine, a poison, and probably committed suicide. His identity remained unknown until this year. In January, the body was finally identified as 67-year-old David Litton. He flew to London from Pakistan right before his death, and luckily his photo was on the passenger list. His identity was confirmed by using the mighty power of DNA testing. His relatives said that David was kind of a loner, someone who enjoyed his own company. He was surrounded by mystery as he liked to keep things to himself and was very reclusive. His girlfriend told The Guardian that she helped him to deal with depression, but it is unclear if this is what brought him to his death. The reason behind his strange death is still unknown. Number 1. Paul Fronsack The short story is that Paul went missing and when a guy named Scott was found, everyone thought Scott was Paul. 49 years later, Paul decided he didn't feel like a Scott and discovered he was actually Jack. Well, that's pretty confusing, I know. Paul Fronsack was born in April 1964 in a Chicago hospital. 
When he was about a day and a half old, he was kidnapped by an unknown woman who pretended to work at the hospital. The woman disappeared as fast as she came, leaving no trace of her or Paul behind. A year passed and a younger male toddler was found outside a store in New Jersey. Authorities named this child Scott McKinley while he was in foster care. Paul's parents were convinced that Scott must be their lost son, Paul. So they did what every loving parent would have done, adopted Scott and changed his name to Paul. Who cares that nobody could confirm that Scott was actually Paul when you have parental love? In 2012, Paul decided something was not right. He took a DNA test to find out if he was really Paul. His parents weren't very happy with the thought that their son, who was now 49, might not be their son. But they eventually agreed and Paul's intuition was right. He was not Paul, but he wasn't Scott either. With the test, he found out that his name was Jack. He had Jewish origins, not Croatian or Polish like his adoptive parents, and he also had a twin sister named Jill who is still missing. His biological parents are now deceased, but he has met with his other family members and they all told him the chilling story of how he and his sister disappeared right before their second birthday. Their disappearances were never reported. The mystery about Jack's sister and the true Paul Fransak remains unsolved. So as Reddit user History Mystery stated, will the real Paul Fransak please stand up? Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed these bizarre cases of missing people. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.